Welcome to another episode of What's Next, and it's a great pleasure to welcome Dion Geyser, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Liquid Intelligent Technology South Africa. Uh, Dion, it's good to see you. Firstly, how, how, how are you? I'm doing really well, Lucky. It's been uh, eight months since I started the role here at Liquid, and I must say it's been an absolutely exciting journey the last several months. Yes, I remember chatting to you when you first took over. You literally were at the job for a, for a few weeks. Um, exactly. Um, and it, it must be a very, very exciting journey that you're on at the moment. And uh, I'm hearing lots of great things coming out of Liquid. But what's been your highlight so far in the first eight months, Dion? I think it's, it's been a very exciting journey because of the fact that we're busy with quite a large-scale transformation outside of just the rebrand that we did in April. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I quite like uh, being able to steer the organization together with our group team into moving from a telecoms company into a technology company. You know? Fantastic. And uh, the programs we've been put in place since the start of the year has, a lot, has dealt a lot with what are we doing from a sales transformation, an operational transformation, a products and services transformation, and heavily investing into what we will talk about today, unified communications. But outside of that, also heavily into our cloud services and cybersecurity services and managed services. Um, and we've been doing a lot of work around service improvement, uh, network quality improvement. Um, and also finally, you know, if you pick up these big technology projects to be also to be able to deliver them quite well through proper program management and what are the operational processes that we need to put in place. So it's been, it's been an exciting journey, uh, rough several months. Uh, in terms of long days, but to be honest, we've, we've got a great team on board. Like, you know, one of the key things I started to do was bring, you know, solid capability from the market into the business. Uh, we've, we've finished that process, our team is up and running. And I must say, it's, it's really good to see the traction that the team has with all these different aspects and, and good to also see what our customers are saying at the end about that, right? Um, so yeah, I must say, it's been an exciting journey, but, but looking forward to the months ahead, you know? You, you've had a very busy time the last few months and um, you know I often drive past your building in Midrand um, yeah. and I'm, I'm always seeing building and something's happening and yeah. I'm hearing stuff about yeah. liquid happening. What exactly are you guys building at the moment out of curiosity? So actually we almost quadrupled our capacity at our data center, you know, our yeah. ABC data center, um, our sister company Africa data centers, you know, we've significantly expanded our capacity at the back of our premises. Um, you know, we, as you look at Liquid Group, right, at Liquid Group, one of the core assets which we have is Africa data centers, um, you know, and right now in South Africa, we're sitting with three data centers in the country. And we started through the heart of COVID, we actually started an expansion in Midrand, and we now at the end of this month completing that exercise. Uh, so really ah. great to see actually what we were able to do, you know, with hundreds, hundreds of people on, on site quadrupling uh, the capacity of what we had there. So, um, so really That's good. amazing. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm looking, forward to coming, yeah. I'm looking forward to coming and visiting uh, that data no, center when, when it's completed, you know. I mean, we're hearing a lot about the fact that Liquid Intelligent Technologies is providing the unified communications. You touched on it earlier. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about the, the, this unified communications. So, Aki, you know, the reason we chose to talk about that today specifically and, and reason why I personally talk a lot about that with our customers is that you know, we believe that similarly to where you had this transition at 1G, which was a whole PSTN fixed line way of communication to where you went into mobility into 2G, we believe that we at that cusp where voice technology actually is fundamentally changing the way that people will actually be communicating. And the reason for that is, is pretty much twofold, you know. On the one hand, all of us are sitting on unified communication platforms like Zoom today, and we are talking you know, and sharing, uh, whether that be voice, video, uh, files, um, applications online the whole time. Now, all of us are doing it worldwide, you know, uh, mm -hmm. seven to seven, depending on how long your days are, but we consistently sitting behind these machines and communicating with each other. And this is actually a form of unified communication platform. However, what we have done as Liquid is we heavily invested into our voice network integration into an example uh, business team's voice to actually allow you to sit at the back of a team's call and be able to actually call outside into any form of PSTN, mobile fixed line whatever telephony service so actually that takes the need away from having to sit in a, in a platform like this and then picking up a phone and then saying okay hey um, can you please join this call i can actually call anyone in from anywhere 
Um, mm, mm. You know, it's a great application for, for businesses. I think many, many, many businesses today have migrated into unified comms as a way of communicating. Yeah. But we believe what, what is the secret source and the change is the fact that being able to integrate that into outgoing and incoming voice services actually provides a unique experience. And then thirdly, Aki, is if you look at the future of what the likes of a Microsoft, for example, is doing, is they heavily investing into their own cloud services voice capabilities. Yes. So we've seen this transition of traditional voice services, which was 1G to 2G to voice over IP to unified comms, and being able to integrate the two experiences, we believe is really game changing. Because imagine, you know, one of our customers that actually signed up uh, all their voice services with us across the continent, you know, we've taken the need away from them for having any form of other device across the continent than just a PC, laptop, or an iPad. You know, mm. they are calling each other across the continent, you know, through business team voice, but being able to also integrate that into the other voice line. So a person sitting, for example, at a call center desk, you know, they don't need another line in order to come in. They don't need another device. They can actually integrate all of that in one go. And that actually sucks a lot of the telecommunication services out of that. And not only for only local businesses, yeah. but as I mentioned, if you think about the people that's doing cross-border type of services and cross-border offices, um, it provides a massive cost saving for, for them. And, and as I mentioned, I, we believe that the secret ingredient is being able to integrate that in, into your traditional voice services. Um, and that is why we as Liquid have heavily invested into that. Um, so uh, looking forward to see more and more customers, you know, moving down that journey. As a business, we ourselves, of course, are using that heavily. And while yeah. I've got a fixed one at my desk at the office, uh, I don't think we will ever use that again. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a very, very powerful statement you've just made and a, and a very compelling argument into doing business this way. I think that it's, uh, it's the way of the future. I mean, what, what is your, speaking of the future, what is your view of the future of voice and, and unified comms? Where does it go from here, Dion? That's an interesting question, Aki. Um, you know, if, if, you look at, if you look at the voice services in, in South Africa the last let's call it 30 years, right? I mean, we went from 1G to 2G services at the advent of Vodacom MTN, starting mobile services, mobile telephony, uh, that went into 3G and then later into, into 4G services, now recently 5G. Yeah. You know, we, we will have this evol evolutionary standard where voice services on a typical mobile device will continuously become more efficient. But we, we believe, if, if I look at our own utilization, that I don't necessarily anymore need to press the green button for a voice application from the device. You know, take think WhatsApp calling, right? WhatsApp calling, I don't know how it is for you, but more than 50% of the calls I receive today is on WhatsApp calls. Why? Because, you know, I've got a reach with, with, with having lived through COVID and working from home, I've invested heavily into a very good data network in my house. I've got good coverage, so I can use an IP connection. Now, imagine being able to use that for, as I mentioned, a Teams integrated voice where it is secure from a business perspective. I've got all my contacts from a business perspective integrated. I can share everything securely. Um, I believe that that will change not only the South Africa context in a big way, but also throughout the continent in a big way. And you will see some exciting stuff from us, uh, Aki, with uh, very good announcements with some of our large multinational partners uh, also very soon. Um, and we believe that, you know, this big OTT as well as local integration and using the best of local knowledge as well as, you know, international partners in order to drive the future of voice services will, will be fundamental for us uh, in the future. Well, it's exciting. I'm looking forward uh, to hearing about that. I mean, Dion, uh, we, we've touched on the, the amazing stuff that you guys are doing and, um, you know, what you're doing for your customers. Customers that are maybe not connected with Liquid right now, watching this and saying, yeah. well, listen, let's, let's, give, let, let's, let's start talking to Liquid. Why should customers talk to Liquid? What is, that, what is the secret sauce that you offer that nobody else is offering right now? Why Liquid? So actually, I, I believe that as a business, you know, we've, we're busy with the transformation program where we're putting our customers at the heart of our business. You know, when I joined our team, you know, I put three priorities out. Number one is customers, right? You know, number two is our operational excellence. And number three is our culture. And, and we, we're busy with all three of them. But I do believe that as a business, our customers are at the heart of what we need to do. I myself share my 
telephone number with all our customers, small, medium, or large. And the reason I do that is because I'd like to get feedback from them about how are we performing. And you know, sometimes those calls aren't great because we have screwed up potentially historically. But as we're driving all these operational excellence initiatives, as well as our customer experience initiatives, we I do believe that in a very short space of time, we will be one of these selected partners of the future. Because those are, you know, as any, you need to put your products and your customers at the heart of that. And I do believe that that will be the game changer for us as a business in South Africa. Yeah, you're spot on there, Dion. And I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned the customer because today it's all about customer experience and mm. uh, what your customer is experiencing with your business. And that, that's going to predetermine on how well the business does. Now, tell us about that customer. You touched on him and it sounds to me like yeah. you're very passionate about your customer as, as, an, as well as giving us a, a market update on what exactly is yeah. happening out there. You know, we've got a, a wide range of customer sets. You know, we've got a broad base of public sector customers, um, large wholesale partners, right? Uh, large scale uh, channel partners. Um, then we also have a big broad base of enterprise customers as well as small medium enterprise customers. So what we've done in our business is we've segmented, you know, our wholesale public sector business, which has now an executive function and head and our chief commercial officer which is purely taking responsibility for that segment of our business. And I've created another executive function reporting directly to, to me, which is dealing with our channels, our enterprise customers, and our SME customers. And I've appointed an executive to deal with our customer experience program, which being outside in our initiatives of operational improvement. So what we're doing is, you know, we're taking the feedback on a day-to-day -day basis and we're driving operational excellence through that dialogue. And we're putting our names forward, all of us, of saying, hey, here's my telephone number. I've got a problem with the service, call me. And I do believe that that will fundamentally change our culture of taking any feedback from a customer seriously and dealing with that as we as we can, you know, and <laughs> as quickly as we can. Now, not only is that helping us to deal with customer-related issues, it also gives us feedback what the market wants. Yeah. And, you know, which is... One of the key aspects we've taken is to change our sales engagement model, whereby it really becomes a TCO and an end-to-end -end value chain discussion with our customers, not just saying, hey, I can do a fiber service or a voice service or a cloud service. We are going in from an engagement perspective to understand our customers' business and helping them to see how technology can help them change their business. You know, it's interesting, okay, I've, uh, previously I mentioned to you that I challenged my team to give me 100 customer meetings in the first couple of months, 95 of them uh, probably at, at this point in time. And what's quite interesting is that many of the CIOs is reporting to a CEO, which potentially is a financial uh, CEO or a CFO function, which is a very financially minded business. So many businesses still see the IT and telecom space as a cost lineup instead of an enabler. Mm -hmm. And we can really help those customers of ours to understand what the technology can do to enable their business. And not only does the CEO himself have to say that, I don't mind meeting CEOs themselves and telling them what we're doing as a business to use technology to bring down cost efficiency, to improve cost efficiencies, to use, to use AI, you know, to use big data in terms of business transformation levers. You know, and I do believe once the other parts of the business segments at a board level understand the technology enabling, uh, it will start changing the game for how people actually run their businesses. So that's a game we're trying to, to really be in. And to be honest, uh, so far, so good. It's, uh, our engagements are, are increasing. Our customers are seeing the value that we can provide. Mm. And just take the discussion of unified comms, which we just had. You know, yes. first time I looked at unified comms, we... You just think, well, okay, it's a Zoom call, it's a Teams call, but actually, if you understand the value we can bring with that and the bottom line benefit it can bring and the efficiency it can bring, it changes the dynamic and thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it sounds to me like you guys have got a really a, a multi prong approach to you know what your customers are doing and trying to understand uh, the, the business that your customer is in. When you look at the value, people ask about value. What, what is the value proposition that you, you have for your customers? Look, the value proposition I see is threefold. Ideas. One, I believe as a partner, we would like to be a strategic advisor to our customers in terms of their thinking of telecommunications and related ICT services. Why? Because we ourselves are running 
telecoms networks and running IT networks and you know networks across 15 countries, right? We we do it ourselves. It's our lunch that we eat. It's our breakfast that we eat. It's our dinner that we yeah. eat. So we understand that, and we understand the benefit it can bring. The second thing is we are trying to do that in a way that fits their wallet. In other words, that drives TCO savings and enabling that TCO discussion and that TCO value to come through the technology. That it doesn't become a technology discussion only. You know, some guys are techies, but at the end of the day, the CEO or the CFO wants to understand what business benefit will that bring me. And then the third aspect is delivering that in a world-class way. Mm. That's really important, you know, and to continuously keep that engagement ongoing as we do that. So that's really the three value propositions we are trying to drive. And we do believe that as a business, we have brought in the right capability. We are extending that throughout our internet business. And the customers that uh, we are working with, with a number of their transformations is feeding that same feedback back to us. So yeah, I, I do believe that as Liquid, we are, are well-placed. Um, for the future beyond, you know, what the working from home or working from anywhere will bring and what the future beyond COVID will mean for us. I'm hoping we can get there potentially soon. Um, and uh, I do believe it's liquid very well placed for the future. Wow, absolutely awesome. And, you know, the reality is that this is changing and evolving as we speak right now, the absolutely. future of work. And, you know, remote working, I mean, uh, you know, there's so many unanswered questions still and people are still learning so much. Yeah. It's always fascinating chatting to you, Dion, uh, about what you've been doing at uh, Liquid. And uh, I know it's eight months in. I look forward to chatting to you a year in to see how things are going. And I look forward to visiting your data center. Dion Geyser, the Chief Executive Officer at uh, Liquid Intelligent Technologies South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us on What's Next. Thank you, Arke. Appreciate it.